Kali Madhat, everyone, and, um, and thank you for joining me again this evening. So last time we were talking about empathy and compassion. And how do we really step into another's shoes to understand where they're coming from, but at the same time maintain a little bit of distance so that, so that we can help them if we need to help them, or that we can act from an objective place without getting too distressed or caught up in that pain the other person's feeling. And today I want to talk about self-compassion, um, which is a little bit different and it's a little bit more difficult uh, because we're not used to giving ourselves compassion, talking to ourselves in a compassionate way. Yeah, we might be a little bit more accustomed to doing it for others, um, but it's, it's a little bit more tricky for ourselves. And so to start this discussion on um, self-compassion, I actually want to read you something that I, I saw on WhatsApp that's been circulating, and I must have got it from three or four different people in all these groups. And it's talking about this lockdown uh, during this time of COVID-19. And it says, if you don't come out of this lockdown with a new skill, more knowledge, better health and fitness, you never lacked time. You lacked discipline. And while I'm sure whoever wrote this had the best of intentions to inspire people to, to look at this time as, a, as an opportunity uh, for growth and learning and uh, fitness, etc. cetera. Um, and while some of you may have taken it in that way, um, I think many of us reading things like that uh, would actually feel a little bad. Yeah, and we may not know why we're feeling bad, but if we use the tools of mindfulness and self-awareness to look, hmm, what, what is this? It's not fitting, feeling quite good when I hear that, that you never lack time, you lack discipline. And it's actually the inner critic that we all have that's telling us you're not good enough, right? You're just not good enough. There's something wrong with you. You're not disciplined enough, right? And so that's what I want to talk about today is self-compassion. There's this researcher called Dr. Christine Neff, and she has devoted much of her life to advocating self-compassion. It's not self-esteem. Self-esteem is about comparing yourself to others and seeing how you might be better than others. And it has all sorts of other implications. We're not talking about self-esteem here. We're talking about relating to yourself in a kinder way. Yeah. And Christine Neff says that we have, to, we have to look at ourselves with kindness. Yeah. So there's this attitude of self-kindness. The way we would talk to a friend or encourage a friend who's going through something, that's the way we should think about talking to ourselves, right? So if you think about it, your best friend, imagine your best friend and comes to you, they're going through something, there's a setback, they're not feeling so great. How would you respond to them? They've just told you how they're feeling. They've just told you that they don't feel good enough or they feel anxious or something to that effect, how would you respond? You'd probably respond with compassion. You'd, you'd, you'd lend them your ear, you'd listen to them, you'd be empathic, yeah? And you'd probably encourage them. You can do this. Yeah? I believe in you. You've done this before. This is, you know, we'll get through this, right? Encouragement, empathy, kindness. That's what we're looking at here. But how many of us actually talk to ourselves like that? No, not many. Not many were usually there like a police officer with a big stick telling him, there you go again, you're lazy, you can't do this, you're incompetent, you're not smart enough, you're not funny enough, you're not cool enough, you're not capable enough or competent enough. And we're constantly doing this to ourselves. We're beating ourselves up. And especially during this time where we're spending a lot more time at home, we may be feeling this, this, this feelings of guilt. We should be doing more, we should be achieving more, we should be spending our time better, etc. And so I invite, I invite you to just talk to yourself as you would talk to a good friend. 
encourage yourself, be kind with yourself. Yeah? And you can do that with an attitude of mindfulness, yeah? being curious about what's going on and what you're feeling right now, and then just giving yourself a healthy dose of self-compassion and self-talk. Some of you may be thinking, hmm, I don't know about this. It's a very softy, softy approach. You know, how will I ever be motivated to do anything if I'm not a bit tough on myself, right? So this self-critic, inner critic is good for me. The research actually shows us that overusing this inner critic is not good for us. Yeah, it invokes the fight or flight response. And what that does is we basically become the attacker and the attacked at the same time. Um, and it often just makes us freeze. Yeah? And we feel incredibly guilty and we may fall into depression. So I wouldn't advocate using much of the inner critic. Instead, I would say, use this other approach, self-compassion, mindfulness, kindness. Yeah? And I want to move now into a wonderful short meditation um, to invoke some of that and to practice some of that. So let's practice and really let, let the mind find the body. By that I mean find a comfortable posture in which you feel relaxed, but a little bit alert at the same time. You might be able to hear the rain, it's heavy rain right now. You might be able to hear that through my microphone. If you do, just take that as a, just a, a way to be calm and immersed in nature. And you might want to close your eyes if that feels comfortable to you, you might want to lower your gaze. And we start with the breath. Find your breath. Just set an intention for yourself. Intention of kindness towards yourself. That may not be very familiar to you, but I invite you now to try it. Intend kindness towards yourself as you would to a good friend or a loved one. Let's come back to the breath. The breath may be long, may be short, might be heavy, might be light. Doesn't matter. Just follow the breath. Notice your inhalation and your exhalation. And when you're wishing well for yourself, You may notice this word, this word is yes. Yes, I am feeling this. And the feelings that might be coming up, they might be pleasant. It might be unpleasant. They might be neutral. And I just like you, I just like you to invite that word yes 
as you watch these thoughts, as you watch these emotions. Yes, this is an unpleasant thought. Yes, this is a cold feeling. I'd like to invite you now to bring up a feeling or a situation that may be difficult for you right now. You might ask yourself the question, what feels hard to accept right now? And I'd like you to meet it with kindness and goodwill. Yes, this is difficult to accept right now. I'd like you to consider what it might feel like to soften some of that resistance. To let go just a little bit. of your feelings around the situation. When you think about the uncertainty, what if you can just lighten your grasp as you predict the future? the possible outcomes. Just let go a little bit, soften, just a little bit, lighten your grip. How does that feel? How does it feel to wish well for yourself? Even amidst these uncertain and challenging times. Returning your attention to your breath, your inhalation, your exhalation. And as you do that, just letting go of any mental images or thoughts. Just focusing on your breath for a few counts. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. When you're ready, just gently opening your eyes, turning awareness to the room, stretching, feeling gratitude. gratitude for all you have. So remember this tool of self-compassion. Be kind with yourself. Just remember, imagine talking to yourself as a close friend or a mentor. Be kind. Yali Muna.